We can never change our past by thinking about it. It is impossible. It would like, it would be like you hear an echo, like a, a, a scary echo. And you go, what's that? And you go running after the echo, trying to change the sound. The echo create in the moment a sound and then wave, wave, wave. The past cannot be changed by revisiting it. Hey guys, today our guest is an internationally renowned spiritual teacher and a best-selling self-help writer. His name is Guy Finley. Guy is the author of over 45 books and audio video programs which has helped people across the world to live in a state of freedom. He writes books for all types, intellectual, emotional, spiritual, to name a few, and his books are considered as a classic literature. Over the year, over the past three decades, he has given over 5,000 plus self-realization seminars on deeper understanding of life. Guy has been featured on over 700 television and radio shows including national appearances on ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, etc. Every week, 100,000 subscribers from more than 140 plus countries read his newsletter. Guy is also the founder of a non-profit center for self-discovery called Life of Learning Foundation. Finally, I would like to say that his teachings could literally change this world for better. Thanks, Guy, for coming onto the show. Thank you, BNS. It's a pleasure to be with you and to make friends with you. Thank you, Guy. Guy, before we uh, jump into the questions, uh, can you say where can people connect with you? Thank you for that. I have, BNS, uh, a very uh, deep and resource-rich website, and it is guyfinley.org, G-U-Y-F-I-N-L-E-Y, GuyFinley.org. I'm also on all of the various social networks. I tweet several times a, a day personally, Instagram, YouTube, pretty much anywhere you go, just search Guy Finley and you'll probably run into me somewhere. I am, I am now, off, I'm, all of my talks are free and online because of the virus business. And so if, if anybody's interested, they can go to my website, get the link, and then there's no cost. You can join me two or three times a week for an in-depth investigation of the things that you and I are going to talk about. I, I, I needed to say that. Awesome, uh, Guy. My first question is that many people consider letting go as not doing anything. Can you differentiate between that? No, letting go requires a, a new kind of activity because letting go when all is said and done is really an inside job. It's not about getting rid of relatives or finding a new job or I'm going to live someplace else where I don't have the troubles that I have where I now live. We have the troubles that we do with people and our job and whatever it may be because we lack vital self-understanding, a vital kind of awareness. And the, 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 the requirement for being attentive inwardly is a very, very active thing. So letting go begins with seeing where it is that we have been passive to problems and pains, things that tell us who we are. And nothing that any thought tells you is you, is you. And once you understand that, then you know what letting go is because it begins with dropping yourself. Thank you, Guy, for the explanation. Guy, my next question is that you always say that life never takes something which it don't give us something better in return. 
Can you explain that? This is a pretty important question. And, and the listeners have to really be with us and think about what I'm going to say next. First, how can any man or woman ever have a quiet heart, a mind at peace, compassion and kindness as their ground if everything about the way the world changes causes them to become unhappy and negative. So that as long as events drive who we are through our experience of them and then the way we judge ourselves and measure ourselves by the event, we will never be a content man or woman. We'll have moments, that's kind of the trap, but inwardly we'll never be a single human being. This means that we must learn to want what life wants. We must learn to want what life wants. And I can hear, you know, how can you tell me to want what life wants, man? I've got a mother-in-law that drives me insane. <clears throat> I've lost my job. I don't know what's coming down the river. Here's the answer. But again, I'm not telling anybody to believe a single word I say. Investigate it. The source of all psychological suffering, the seed of it, BNS, is not wanting. You cannot find a moment that you are in pain about or over without you first not wanting that event. You tell me, as advocate for the listeners, what good has not wanting a moment ever done to change the moment you don't want? Nothing. We must learn to understand that the moment, what we call the moment, is actually a revelation Every moment is a revelation in the world of passing time, revealing to us some eternal character, some quality in ourselves, so that when we deny what the moment reveals, we are denying self-knowledge. And when we deny self-knowledge, we are denying ourselves the possibility of discovering that our true self is already aligned with the divine, already perfectly accepting what life brings. Not that we lay down and happens that we don't want, but that our first priority is to gain self-knowledge through the revelation of what the moment has revealed about ourselves to ourselves. That's it. Thanks, Guy, for the clear explanation. Guy, in the book you have written that un unhappiness does not come at you, but comes from you. Can you explain it? Yeah, that's what we just described. Resistance to the disturbance is the disturbance. Resistance to the disturbance is the disturbance. No moment in and of itself has any quality whatsoever other than the consciousness in which it unfolds. Which means that my consciousness is what determines the meaning of the moment. And when I understand that something in me is going, oh, that's a terrible moment, and it resists the event summarily, I have to understand the moment isn't causing the pain. The resistance to the revelation is separation from the divine. And separation is the source of that suffering. And as long as we remain uh, apart from our own highest possibilities, by the way. I mean, would you walk into a room filled with treasure chests and walk over and pick up a stale piece of bread and say, oh, this is what I want? No, of course not. And that's what happens to us, BNS. Guy, uh, why does 
dominating the fear or resisting the fear does not work because when we try to push away a fear it means that we are being passive to a part of our own consciousness that believes who and what we are has something to fear at all my definition of a fearless life is the man or woman who begins to understand that everything that happens to us in this life is for the good of us because everything that happens in this life will show us something about ourselves we don't know until that moment unfolds the way it does and by the way that's good what we would call good and bad have you ever i don't know where where do you live in in uh, bns i live in india no that, that i know what part <laughs> south india guy so, near a city i would know yeah uh, hyderabad mumbai hyderabad, hyderabad yeah. okay i i I've, I've been to india a couple times you go outside and maybe whatever it might be you look at the beautiful countryside you look at a stellar night sky when you see something like that what do you think it is that makes it so deep and beautiful and enduring what what do you think is going on when you see something like that bns why am i drawn to that we see that uh... the nature is flowing uh, we see the flow of time okay let's just say that that's one of the things <clears throat> but what's really going on is that that uh, that vast nature the clouds moving through the sky the mother holding the baby whatever it may be is revealing character and quality in my consciousness that i'm not aware of without that unfolding in front of me the way it does and that's beautiful so that we love when we see the the natural animal the wild landscape because it tells us something about ourselves we don't know without standing right there in that moment of revelation yes do you agree and all good Mwah. love it but then i go inside my house and i get an email from somebody that's angry at me and i go from oh i love this life beautiful to i hate this moment i don't want this person bugging me what do i do to get rid of the problem and we have failed to see the exact same relationship where we loved being outside and in the beauty of nature is taking place again only now the beauty of god of the divine is showing us where we are walking around with limitations in our consciousness that want to blame the thing that we fear or worry about on the situation outside of us instead of waking up and realizing thank you i didn't know that about my consciousness but now i do and i will actively attend to that revelation and then because i do that the light of that awareness begins to change my consciousness guy you say that we are not afraid of people but we are afraid of our own thoughts about people can you uh, explain that it's a great liberating truth if we're willing to see it the only thing that troubles us about any other person is what we want from them we are without knowing it and this is germane to everything we're talking about we walk around with all of these unconscious attachments so many different ways bns that we measure ourselves and our value 
by what we think other people are thinking about us. So that if I'm looking at BNS here and I'm going, oh, no, no. Well, he did, what if he doesn't like me? Then my mind is going to judge you instead of recognizing the only problem I have is that I want your approval. And if I want your approval, BNS, I'm dead in the water. Not one chance of one new revelation will come because I'm tied to this idea that my, my value depends on you thinking I'm worthwhile. No. That was awesome, uh, Guy. Guy, <laughs> guy uh, what do you say to the people who are always stuck in the past memories, uh, regretting their past actions? This is important. We can never change our past by thinking about it. It is impossible. It would like it would be like you hear an echo, like a, a, a scary echo. And you go, what's that? And you go running after the echo, trying to change the sound. The echo create in the moment a sound and then wave 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 the past cannot be changed by revisiting it the past is changed when we die to the consciousness responsible for it and that wants to keep reliving it while saying it wants to escape it it's like a man running back to prison trying to figure out how to be free Yes, guy, it suits uh, very perfectly. One more thing. There is a difference, and I hope you can understand me, and at least if you can, hope you can transcribe it. Most of us are always um, in a in a kind of retrospective state. That's what thinking about our life, about what just happened. I look at my bank account, oh no, retrospective, always comparing. Nothing can be changed through a retrospective act. All real change takes place through seeing the reflection of myself in the moment. So not retrospection, but reflection. The direct awareness of myself in the moment as the whole is retrospection divides me up from what i'm thinking about no healing can take place there only in interior unity does a man or a woman bring about change in their consciousness so now i'm not measuring myself by what i did and who i was and who did what or didn't give me what i wanted all nonsense eventually understood, and then a man is free of that. Guy, you have written that uh, anything we try to control uh, controls us. Can you explain that? Write this down, everybody. This is a great, powerful, spiritual secret. As goes my attention so comes my experience. As goes my attention, so comes my experience. But you see, BNS, our mind is fractured. It's fragmented. It's divided. So when I have my attention taken by a thought that tells me, Oh, what did that person say and why did they say it? It seems to me like I'm trying to figure out what to do so that I'll be free of the pain I'm in because of what they said. But where is my attention in that moment? Is it, is it on the future or is it actually attending to the very pain that I say I don't want? 
so that the more I try to control someone else because I don't like what they've done, control the circumstance that's causing me to be afraid, my attention is actually an, an extension of a consciousness that's clinging to the thing it says it doesn't want. So the more I try to control what I don't want, the more I am controlled by that consciousness that is asleep to itself and recreating the experience it doesn't want. Why can we say that uh, we are watching a bad movie again and again? Yeah, that's exactly right. It's like a man, every day he goes to work. He complains to his friend, I hate this sandwich. It's not a good sandwich. I don't know why I'm, why it, it's always the same thing. Uh, chicken and rice. I, I don't want that sandwich anymore. His friend says, well, you know, you've been complaining for three years now about the same sandwich. Why don't you ask your wife to make something different for you? And he looks at his friend. He says, I'm not married. Well, who makes your sandwich for you? I do. <laughs> That's what we need to see. Our mind makes up every day what it wants to revisit or relive. When we understand that our consciousness is forever trying to escape the unwanted content of its own past experience, we will stop re-experiencing our mind doing that. Guy, what do you think of the widely held belief, uh, no pain, no gain? It's true and it's not. I don't know if you play any sports, BNS. My activity, when I am not working, I like to play golf. I go, if I can, two times a week for a few hours. I walk and get exercise because I'm an old man and I need to keep the body healthy, which we must do. So at the level of exercising the body, if I don't exercise the body, the body is just going to rot, which basically, in one respect, isn't what the body wants to do, but the mind doesn't want to go through the pain the body has to experience. So the mind would let the body rot. Just sit back and, you know, eat, uh, eat food and whatever. So I have to understand, I must discipline my body. Not punish it, but discipline it. On the other hand, I often go to the golf course and I'll see men and women on the practice range who have been there for years perfecting imperfection. Perfecting imperfection. Doing the same swing over and over again said is the definition of insanity. Repeating the same thing that something else will take place. No pain, no gain. Sometimes the pain has to be doing what the body doesn't want to do. Sometimes the pain has to do not doing what the body wants to do and doing something else. So it's true and it's not true. And it all depends on our level of understanding. Guy, what is the first step of letting go? Seeing that holding on hurts. We've been talking about that. It hurts to have an enemy. It hurts to regret my past. It hurts to fear my future. But I don't know it hurts to have an enemy because I believe my enemy's hurting me. So I resist my enemy and I am blind to the pain that's produced by having anyone that I, that I don't like. 
I am blind when I believe that the fear I'm experiencing right now is because of something I've imagined may be coming. To see that I am holding on right now to something that promises freedom but delivers a prison is the beginning of being free right now from the consciousness that imprisons me without me seeing it. Guy, what do you mean by don't let people die for nothing? There's a, a tremendous illusion, BNS. It's just part of our present undeveloped level of consciousness. Because we relate to the world almost entirely through our sensations that the world produces and then a mind that interprets those sensations. So that when I have pleasing sensations, good food, sex, I look at my bank account, things are rolling in. Ah, oh, I love the world. But then, because I don't know, I become attached to the image my mind makes when I get fat and can't eat, when nobody wants to be with me, and with my, um, my account goes down, oh, it's a terrible world. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. So that we begin to understand, if we can, that our value as a human being and the way in which we know ourselves is not through this constant sense of separation. Do you get mad at anybody ever, BNS? Okay. I get mad at somebody because I believe they're different than I am. Isn't that why you get mad? Can I get mad at somebody without judging them first or is judgment the first thing? Judgment's first, isn't it? I have to find something's wrong with you. I have to decide that before I can blame you, right? So first I judge. What do I judge? You are different than I am. But why did you do what you did that makes me upset? Is it because you're happy? Or is it because you're in pain? Why does anybody do anything that hurts another human being that doesn't begin with that man or woman being in pain first? <clears throat> You're in pain, then you make me feel pain, then I want you to feel pain again. Then you want me to feel pain. This is the world, BNS. We are all in pain. Every human being suffers. Almost no human being knows why. Because we blame everyone for our pain. When we understand that we are not separate selves, there's no BNS over there and no guy sitting over here in the United States. We look different, we sound different, but we have one heart and one mind. When we understand that, that means that everything I do to change the kind of mind I have as an individual expression of God's mind, as an individual expression of the divine heart, changes that mind and heart in every human being on the planet. That's why Christ dying for humanity, the Buddha, Lao Tse, the great teachers, all talk endlessly about sacrifice. Why? Because what I die to brings to life the possibility in everyone else. So that's why if you and I change who we are, we change everyone, including people who have, in quotes, died. Because they are not gone, they're just out of sight. One heart, one mind, one possibility, one perfection. That's our work. Thank you, Guy.
guy we hear that uh, um, we hear that people say to be either optimist or pessimist but you say that we have to be realist can you talk about that have you ever watched an eagle or a beautiful bird flying through the air do you think the bird is flying there or going i am so beautiful look at my wings aren't i magnificent do you think that, that anything like that passes through the noble lion the great water buffalo the magnificent elephant or is the nature of that creature all that it experiences and all it needs to experience and we know the answer so why do i have to look in the mirror and go you are magnificent <laughs> I've never seen a creature with your strength, your wisdom. It's incomparable. Thank God. And it's only going to get better. You're going to be even more magnificent when you become something. So that all forms of optimism are about a nature that is secretly trying to make itself feel good about itself. We don't need to make ourselves feel good about ourselves because what in me is trying to feel good if not something that feels bad. So when I am an optimist, I am secretly confirming my sense of inadequacy, my worries or my fears. To catch the nature that's afraid and drop it because I see it hurts to identify with it is true optimism. Because in that moment, I am optimizing my own nature and its possibilities. Thank you, Guy. Guy, I have one question. How to overcome addiction? Addiction. Look, everybody that's watching, <clears throat> take your left hand. Go ahead. You do it too. This is my addiction. I don't want this. It's terrible. What a horrible hand this is. Uh, I'm compulsive. I'm, I'm out of control. I hate myself horrible left hand now take your right hand this is me this is wisdom and strength and everything that judges my left hand now take your right hand everybody and get rid of your left hand with your right hand go ahead push it away get rid of it push you're not pushing hard enough control it get rid of it make it go away does it go away? <laughs> what actually happens? I actually strengthen my left hand. In the, in the Bible, Christ said, never let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. He's implying that there's levels of consciousness and that if this hand is trying to push away this hand and it's strengthening this. This hand is secretly in relationship with this hand. Can't change it. Strengthening the image of myself that is good and loving and wise and the image of myself that doesn't exist without that that's evil and dark and addicted. So that doesn't work. Yes. We can control certain things, BNS. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm chronically negative at work. My supervisor says, you know what? You're bringing everybody down. You got to shut up, man, or you're out of here. Oh, no, I don't want to lose my job. So I stop talking out loud 
but I'm still talking in my head. I've controlled the manifestation, but not the consciousness responsible for it. The way in which we get past an addiction is by becoming aware of the parts of us that require it to make us feel complete. Try to follow this, everybody. You don't know it yet, but you are already holy. You are already a whole, sane, decent, loving, compassionate human being. But you don't know it yet because something in you says, I have to become that. Then when the mind says, I have to become that, that mind then starts telling me what I have to do to become that. And then I can't do what it says to become that. And then I start to hate myself for not becoming that. And then I start drinking. I start watching porn. I start shooting up, smoking dope to get over the fact that I never became what I was supposed to become. But if I saw all that, and I still can, not retrospectively, but in the present reflection, I see I have been blind. I have been asleep. And if I ask, based on what I see for the divine, for God as I know it, to help me, you can be sure you will see more and more and more that releases you from the false identification and its attachment increasingly. Thanks, Guy. It was so insightful. Thank you very much. Um, Guy, one of our subscribers has a question for you. Okay. Um, Matthew asked that, uh, why do bad things happen to good people also? Yeah. We need three hours for that answer, BNS. <laughs> but here's the answer. And then, as with everything we're talking about, we have to we have to contemplate it. We have to actually take it into our mind and heart. And like the seed that all true self-knowledge is, it will grow if we give it the light of awareness and the water of love. It will grow. Here's the answer. Bad things never happen to good people. Here's why. Our mind, BNS, it's tiny. <laughs> it's, 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 like a, it's like a little paper cup. When love and wisdom and goodness is the universe. So we try to understand the magnificence, the mercy, the justice, the compassion of the infinite by pouring it into a little paper cup. What is growing as a man or a woman spiritually letting go? If not, the cup gets a little bigger, little bigger, little bigger. Now, I'm not filling the cup. I'm emptying the, 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 the self. I'm emptying myself of myself, letting go. When I am able to do that, I start to understand that the mercy of God, the goodness of the divine, works on a, on, a, on a level of time and scale that our present paper cup consciousness can't comprehend. But we can, as human beings, use our mind properly to understand it. This is one of my favorite subjects, BNS. How many times have you in your life, BNS, felt like life just delivered you the worst possible thing that could ever happen. You, you can't count it. Me, I know. I mean, I, I, everything that can happen bad to a man has happened to me. I mean that. But I wouldn't change one of those moments for all the money in the world because although 
sometimes it takes a lot longer, I see, you know what, that, thank, thank God that happened. Because I would never know what I now know is true. And that what happened, happened to a part of me, not the whole of me. And me not wanting it actually kept me from discovering the justice, the mercy, the kindness, the freedom. An addict never wants to know that he's an addict. And then one day, by the grace of God, he sees that he has been blind to what he's doing to himself. So now he can see his own blindness. Thank you, God. Thank you for showing me that I was set against myself because now I can never agree to be that me again. Liberty in scale. That's why bad things never happen to good people. It is all the act of the divine harmonizing and reconciling this universe according to a level of scale that we can't, that we're meant to be a part of. I want to make that clear. You and I, as human beings, are made in the image of God. That means the whole universe, as a macrocosm, is expressed in us as a microcosm. I am the embodiment of the divine. I can understand divine time, but not through a mind that insists that tomorrow I get a check or that you apologize later today. Then I'm dead in the water. Guys, that's absolutely true. Thanks uh, for the explanation. You're welcome. Um, Guy, what do you say to the people who think that uh, for, spiritual, for spiritual development, they have to segregate uh, and isolate from society and live in forest or something? <laughs> I did that. <laughs> I did for seven years. And it would be silly to say there isn't value in a very dedicated effort to awaken oneself, bring the energy up, open up the chakras. I mean, how you want to talk about it, I'm comfortable east or west. But you don't escape the mind by trying to escape it. The mind, our consciousness is not intended to be controlled or escaped. It's intended to be integrated into the awareness that reveals that our present consciousness is one of the many mansions in the kingdom of the divine. And when we recognize it as such, instead of taking our wish to change it as being the proof that somehow we're celestial, then we begin this beautiful process of integrating ourselves using everything around us. In the Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna's talking to Arjuna, he's trying to explain to him, man, you can't get out of this. <laughs> this is your duty, dude. You, you have to go into this war. Now, the war wasn't really a war, although there may have been a war. It's an interior struggle. And my uncles and my brothers and all the things, these are qualities and characteristics in my consciousness. I must engage them. But I go do understanding that no sling, no arrow, no fire, none of that business can hurt and harm me. So I don't need to escape anything. I need to see the consciousness that fears conditions and then transcend the fear by integrating the consciousness. I hope that's clear. Yes, Guy. Guy, another subscriber, Stephen, has a question for you. He said, yeah. he's asking that sometimes despite putting our best efforts, we may not get the desired results. How to look at such situations? <laughs> it all depends, doesn't it? On what do I believe is the best result? If I believe the best result is something that further develops this ego this goal-setting madman 
that believes he will only be worthwhile when he accumulates these powers or these possessions, physically or spiritually. You know, there are a lot of people that, that I'm after CDs. I want powers. I've been down that road, too. This does squat, does nothing. You have all the power in the world and still be an unpleasant human being hurting yourself and others. So what is the real best result? And the answer is a change in my consciousness, a little more freedom, not more dependency. Guy, why should one learn the secret of letting go in the modern world? It doesn't matter what world you're in. The whole of every journey on essentially every plane of existence is letting go. It is discovering by the grace of God that that what shows us our limitations is not there to punish us, but to release us from the identity inherent in clinging to that limitation. It's the last thing we believe. The person who asked that question believes, and it's necessary for now, that if I can become what I've imagined, I will be free. What that man or woman can't see is that anything they imagine is a limitation. And the more I understand that, the more I am released from a nature that imagines a time to come when I will be free. And when I die to that divided mind, I enter into an eternity where I am already whole and free and have a life that is more abundant that will ever be described because it is ceaselessly refreshed with what is good and true, right and bright. Guy, would you like to issue a seven-day challenge to our viewers? A seven-day challenge. <laughs> How about a 7,000-year challenge? Here's the seven-day challenge. It's an exercise. Write it down, everybody. It's called Stop, Drop, and endure. Stop, drop, and endure for seven days. Every time you catch a thought or feeling telling you something's wrong with somebody else, something's wrong with you, you've got to go here and get there quick, or you mustn't let people talk to you like that. Every time you catch a feeling of constriction, stress, Every time you catch it, stop. Literally come to a stop. Not in your car, unless it's safe. I used to do this. If I've catched that, that contraction, some stuff, I would pull over. Why? Because then I would stop and I would begin to drop everything that was telling me why I had to hurt. It's unbelievable. We listen to parts of us tell us why we have to suffer. If you had, if, BNS, if you had somebody come over to your house every morning, you open the door, let's have some chai, have a little snack, and all they do is talk to you for the rest of the day about what's wrong with you, what you have to do to be happy, how long, and steal from you, how long would you invite that person in your house? Not anymore. <laughs> You'd be done. Stop. Drop everything that's talking to you. Why? Because if I actually try to drop what's talking to me, I will see what's talking to me. Next part. Stop, drop. What's next, BNS? Endure. Oh. Endure what? Dying to myself. Letting go. Because now I know what I have to let go of. Me. This chattering mind. This anxious heart 
always trying to figure out how to protect itself or become something beyond harm. That mind and that heart know nothing. They only imagine possibilities and then suffer from attachment to the outcome when the outcome is challenged by changing conditions. Stop, drop, and endure. One last thing. I don't know in India, Farsi, whatever the language may be, what is the, what's the word for patience in your language? Sahanam. Sahanam, patience. Do you know, I, I, and it probably the English language is bankrupt. It's terrible. The old languages have the beautiful meaning, multiple meaning. But the original meaning, possibly from the days of Sanskrit, of the word patience, is to suffer yourself. Isn't that beautiful? Stop, drop, endure. Suffer yourself, not what your brain is telling you has brought the problem. You're never going to change the person that makes you unhappy. You're never going to make the world go the way you want it to go. What you can do is change the way you go into those moments and from what part of you. Then you will fulfill your possibilities by letting go. Guy, uh, last question. Uh, can you once again say where can people connect with you so that they will remember it better? Yes. Everybody in India, what is the word for acknowledge? I acknowledge something. What's the word for acknowledge? Gurtin Chadam. See, I like your I like your language better than mine. Mine is like acknowledge. Yours is flows. We must, and I think we do. Will you acknowledge with me, BNS, that we've learned some important things? Yes. Acknowledge. Now we must act knowledge. Act knowledge. Actualize. To actualize means. I have to be willing to go into places that maybe I don't want to go into. Acknowledge. Go to my website, guyfinley.org, G-U-Y-F-I-N-L-E-Y.org. Listen to BNS when he's talking about these ideas because BNS understands and wants to grow as a human being. Grow with him. Take these principles discover the power that's behind them instead of trying to make yourself powerful through them. That's a totally different story. The principles we talked about are divine. They're not my teachings. That's ludicrous. Align yourself with principle. Principle will perfect possibility. Possibilities perfected are the perfection of the soul. The perfection of the soul is the assistance to every soul on this planet. Then we're doing our work. Yeah, we got to go to work. We got to get in the cars. We got to go to the office. Got to do all that. Got to deal with the virus, blah, 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 blah. But let's have a first work. A first work. Seven-day challenge. See what you can learn. Then you tell BNS what you learned when you work with him. That's it. And of course, all the social networks. And again, if you understand English, two or three times a week, I'm online for free. And the talks are archived, so it's not an issue of timelines. Go to my website, guyfinley.org. Discover the link that says free talks. Sign up. Nothing to join. No cost. And visit me. Acknowledge and work with me. That's it. Guy, before we leave the interview, I want to share to audience how I feel about you. So, <laughs> so first of all, I have discovered you through Debbie Eaton, who works for uh, Life of Learning Foundation. And she has recommended that uh, you always say to choose a book or title based on your uh, uh, connection. 
so i was browsing uh, your books over 40 plus books and while i was browsing it the secret of letting go title like uh, jumped to me so i have read it in two days and it is really helping me in my self revelation thank you i am uh, thank you guy i am very very grateful for your work i'm very very grateful for this chance to talk to you bns and to be friends across the whole world and maybe one day if god wills i'm over there you and i can sit and have a cup of chai and have a meal together and if you ever come over to southern oregon you let me know and i'll find a place for you to stay for a few days okay thank you guy that was awesome uh, guys go and uh, check out uh, guys youtube channel and uh, register at www.guyfinley.org where you can get online classes for free and they are super so trust me guys thanks guy for coming to the show thank thank you bns uh, it's nice to be friends with you you be careful you be well and you do the 7 day challenge too yes guy <laughs> okay my friend bye bye subscribe to bns goku great